And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at cartography. Now, I don't know much about Playford games. They sent me a package of games and I was intrigued because they're abstract strategy games. And while I get somewhat times of a rap, like you don't like abstract strategy games, I actually find a lot of them very fascinating and have many, many of them on my favorites lists uh, because you know, I want them to offer, some of them, look, they look beautiful. I want them to offer some strategic depth to them. Just some interest, you know, I'm looking for something that kind of fascinates me and grabs me. So I went through them and looked at them, and this one looked pretty interesting, especially since it's an abstract strategy game for multiple players. Let's take a look. Each player has a bunch of colored discs of their, well, the, for, represent them on the board. You're going to start with this group of tiles out here, and then all the rest of the tiles are going to be sorted out. You can play a version where they're face down and you draw a hand of them or whatever, but the best way to play is to just draw from one of these tiles here. So on your turn, all right, the first thing that you're going to do, and, and the number of tiles in play is going to determine uh, basically how long the game is. Right, so uh, the, if you use all the tiles, the game is going to be longer. But the first thing you do is you pick a tile from any stack, and you're going to place it adjacent to a stack here. All the edges have to match, so I can't do this. Obviously, I can't. I have to be able to place the river somehow next to the river like that, as I'm placing these. Then, when you're done, you can put a castle on any unoccupied hill on a land tile to claim the land. So that's mine. So black can play here. Now, the goal is when you place it here, that you are forming castles or castle groups. So for example, this is a black castle group. This is an orange castle group. What the rule is though, when you put a piece down, a castle group has to have at least one adjacent uh, empty castle here. So if there was a green one here, for example, I could not place this orange one here because there would be no empty adjacent castles. In fact, even more deadly, if I had it like this and green placed it here, green would capture all these because there would be no empty adjacent castles. So you have to be careful about that. And if possible, you want to leave yourself with, you know, empty spots on both sides of your groups. So as you're placing your different castle things out here, if orange goes here, orange isn't really going to be able to do that because when they're done, there's no empty group. If there was an orange one here, then yes, orange could place like this, getting rid of that. Now there's an empty group there. Of course, they're leaving themselves available for capture right away. Of course, then they can capture right back and so on and so forth. But uh, what you're doing is you're getting every time you capture an opponent's piece, you get to keep that piece. And uh, at the end of the game, and the game's over when the tiles run out, you're going to, or actually, I'm sorry, when everyone passes and no one's able to play anymore, uh, all the tiles are out and everyone passes, they can't play anymore, you're going to count all the discs that you have plus all the discs that are on the board. So the more I capture plus the more I get on the board, the more points I'm going to win. Uh, that's pretty much the game. It's a little, you know, other than that, it's kind of, you can see these rivers are going to change things with adjacencies and things like that. Uh, and there's a lot of empty tiles out here and it's kind of abstract and there's not much more I can show you. That's pretty much the game as it is. Yeah, this one's pretty bad folks. Uh, these tiles look boring as all oh, my goodness. They couldn't like make, uh, it's just game looks so blah. I mean, I'm glad they use these discs to, that are different, easy, you know, easy to tell apart, but they're just discs. An abstract game needs to be pretty, uh, or it needs to pretend it has a theme. This one does not, none. So there's rivers and tile, this whole thing, when the whole game is done, set on the board, it just looks like a bunch of triangles and dots. Doesn't, the game's called cartography, it's about map making, and yeah, I'm not seeing it here at all. So this is a bust component-wise. <laughs> Now you might be thinking how the game looks is going to affect Tom's opinion. You're right, it does. Like I said, abstract strategy games should look beautiful. They don't got a lot more going for them. This one does not. Okay, but let's take that out of the thing, which it's hard to do. Again, just a blow a mess on the board. But let's say you take that out. Is the game itself interesting? And the thing is, it's not. It, it's better as a two-player game because there's that back and forth. As a three to four player game, sometimes there's just this capture back, back and forth, back and forth. And 
the, I, I know what the game is trying to do. It's trying to be like a more open-ended, not go, but maybe Othello, like a more open-ended Othello. So the, the map is going to grow. But the rivers, as you place the map there, don't really make the map that interesting. The map, as it grows, I mean, it's a tile-laying game of sorts, right? So that should be interesting, and it's really not. You Sometimes, you know, like, ooh, the river, and ooh, I built this, and I made this way, so I expanded my area out here. You'll never capture me. And the book has some tactics and some quotes from Sun Tzu, because that hell always makes the game better. Um, the, it, it, you know, if you get these areas that's surrounded by your own pieces, if you get a hill, those points are called hills. I know you never know that. But there, if you get a hill surrounded by your own pieces, then how is someone ever going to take that away from you? Especially if you get two of these hills, these two of these places that are surrounded by your own pieces, then the groups that are next to them can never be captured. Okay, interesting. But the gameplay itself is a slog. It says, I'll put a piece out. Since you can put a piece all over the board, and then there's this kind of a rapid race sometimes. And again, it works better as a two-player game. As a three to four-player game, it's just a mess. As people piece all over the board, one person can foolishly put a piece somewhere and give someone else a whole pile of pieces, essentially handing the game to that other player, which is frustrating if you are one of the other players not involved in that transaction. In fact, I'm going to go so far to say the game does not work multiplayer, period. I think there's too many problems with it. As a two-player game, it's a little more interesting, back and forth, but there's a lot of back and forth games. And this one isn't snappy. The how you place the hills and everything kind of is this abstract. You got to kind of pull back a little bit to look at it. And I just didn't find that intuitive. So that combined with you know, how it looks just makes this one a pass for me. There are other abstracts out there that I'd rather play. Dice Tower Judgment, ugly and not that exciting.